Hey there! In this video, I will talk about managing media for documentaries, more specifically, frame rates. This is not only for assistant editors, but also for directors and producers that may be managing their projects on their own from the very beginning. With the democratization of video capture, we have a huge selection of cameras we can use to capture. And at some point in the, in the life cycle of any documentary, you're bound to use different equipment for different moments. Now, how can we manage that in a way that will decrease the amount of work and headaches I might have down the pipeline? We will just get to it, but before, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you know when the next video comes out. You may think, ah, every application nowadays is used to dealing with all of this and it would be unacceptable if they didn't. Acceptable or not, you will use applications that you didn't create and that you don't control how they're developed. Therefore, this is really important for you to understand how they work, what are their advantages and their shortcomings. One of their main shortcomings is that today there is no standard on how timelines work and moving an edit from one application to another always requires an amount of work. Sometimes not a lot, and sometimes a lot, depending on how you dealt with your project from the start. And a slight note on that, if you scream XML as the way to move things from one application to another, every company makes a best effort in order to support the many different versions of XML that exist. But each of those companies may decide to write and translate what they are doing internally on an XML the way they want. For this, there is no standard. One good example of data that never comes across well is title data. Each NLE has their own versions of on-screen text and animations, and each one of them deals with them in a different way. When they write the information about the titles to be transferred to another application, they may use some descriptions that may not be properly interpreted by the receiving application, or may not even mention information such as which font was used. So how do we solve this? We start by planning how you will finish the movie. You start from as much in the end of the process as you can. If you already know who will do sound and color and which applications they will use, the better. Because then you know what needs to be kept in mind. But we will start with the most obvious thing, resolution and frame rate. This thing you need to ask yourself is, what's the resolution and frame rate of your project? In Europe, the answer is generally simple, either 1080p or UHD at 25 frames a second. In the US, that varies a lot. It can be 1080i, 1080p, UHD, it may be 2398, it can be 24, 2997, 30 frames a second, depending on how it will be distributed. Nowadays, analysts can deal with mixed resolutions and mixed frame rates in their timeline, but as soon as you need to hand over your edit for color and sound, those other professionals might be using a different application and your edit will not come through the same way as it intended if you used mixed frame rates in your timeline. Why? Every application handles conform on the timeline in a different way. And then, when you're creating your turnovers, you may end up spending a lot of time fixing things manually. The solution and best way to proceed, in my opinion, is to conform your media before starting your edit. The main thing you want to confirm is the frame rate to the same as your timeline, but you need to keep a few things in mind. Conforming to a lower frame rate will always render better results. Conforming from 30p to 25, for example. If you try to conform 2398 to 25, you may get some artifacts due to the need of create extra frames where they don't exist in order to fulfill those 25 frames a second. Even if your phone media is recorded in the correct frame rate, always conform it. Why? Because to this present moment, no phone in the world produces constant frame rate videos. Not even the iPhone recording in ProRes and Apple Log. All their videos are variable frame rate and that will cause headache later in the, your pipeline. Color space and gamma. Ideally, you want to conserve those so your choice of codec and conform will be important. Don't discard the original files, they contain metadata that may not be retained during the conform. As an example, the color gamma and gamma on Sony files. I will show you one method to conform frame rate, but this can be done in many different ways with many different applications. In my case, I'm using Edit Ready. First, let's create a preset on Edit Ready for my conform. I will use ProRes 422, 
the resolution will remain the original from the media and the frame rate will be a constant 25. I will add underscore conform to the file name so it's quite obvious this is not the original in case we ever need to go back. I will now save this preset so I can use it again in the future and I will use this preset for every video of variable frame rate namely the iPhone footage and any other video that's not 25 frames a second in this project. One easy way to know which media has to be conformed when it didn't come from the phone is to import it to a MEM or to import it to your NLE and make a note of which ones need to be conformed. In my case, I have these four examples. iPhone shot on the Blackmagic camera app, iPhone shot with the built-in camera app, Sony A1 in UHD at 50p and Sony A1 in 8K. The only one I don't need to rate conform is the 8K footage that's already in 25p. One thing I'm not covering in this video is file names. I will normally rename them for every documentary for them to be more useful. Now we bring the videos in edit ready, choose where they should be saved and process them. This will take the time that it takes depending on the multitude of things, not limited to the speed of your storage in your computer. The way I like to organize my files is by shoot day or subject, then folders inside by camera card. So I will have a folder for the original media and the conformed media, properly tagged so I know which one to use. As I import the media to my NLE, we can see all of it with the frame rate in which I will add it. This will be very logical for some people, but I must mention, be very careful when creating projects. Make sure you're creating it in the correct frame rate. If you add it in the wrong frame rate and later on want to fix it, you will be in for a lot of meticulous, boring work. When I create an XML or an EDL, there will be nearly no work needed to be done in order to adjust the turnover delivery if there are only cuts. As soon as you add speed ramps, transitions and titles, that may require more work on the turnover. If you did any color work on it, it will may be lost on the XML. I hope this video helps someone out there. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you know when there is a new video on this channel. See you next time.